thank you, Lord, for your good grace this morning. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for us. And I pray again, God, rebuke the devil from around this place. Give us, Lord, a clear thoughts today. And God, help us, Lord, to rightly divide the word of truth. And Lord, I pray, God, you'd help us to see the need. And God, the necessity of the hour. God, that we, as believers, God, be living right and serving you and doing thy will. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll title our message this morning. I'll just tell you right away, the best is yet to come. I, you know, I've been watching the news here some this week. I don't watch it a whole lot. But everywhere I look, it seems there is despair, seems there is distress, seems there is anger. Uh, the world's in a mess. And, you know, and it's not limited to outside the United States. We're in a mess also. America is in decline. And, you know, uh, people that don't agree with that just have their heads in the sand. Because America is in decline. We are, we are rapidly on a slippery slope uh, headed toward a major disaster in this country. And I'm not trying to scare anybody. I'm just telling you, if you can't see it, friend, uh, you need to wake up and open your eyes. Moral decline is everywhere. Moral decay is everywhere. Sin is being, seems like sin is being manufactured. Something new every day to cause men to sin. And friend, we're just in bad shape. But I'm glad that for as a believer, my hope is not in the, the United States. My hope is not in the world. My hope is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And I declare to you today, no matter how bad it gets, I've heard of, of Christians being martyred. I've heard of children being beheaded uh, this week, amen, because of their faith and in, in belief in the Lord. Now, I don't know if all these people are even saved people. They named the they named Christianity as their religion. I don't know if they're all saved people, but I know one thing: because they named the name of a Christian, they're being persecuted. And look, friend, don't be don't be surprised when it comes to our country. Amen. You say, "I preach it'll never happen here." Don't be surprised, friend. We're being persecuted in America now because of our beliefs. Uh, we're trying to be silenced all over the country because of our beliefs. But all today, my friend, my again, my hope is not in this world. The best is yet to come. Romans chapter number 8. Now, I want to get down to verse number 18 if I can, but there's a lot in here, so you pray for us this morning. We see here uh, that there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it is weak through the flesh, God sent in his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit." Friend, there is a mouthful of information in, in verses number 1 through 4. It compares, it tells us what the law is and what the law could not do uh, for us, but what grace by the Lord Jesus Christ can do for us. This old flesh is nothing but trouble, but the Spirit of God, amen, is how we should live our lives. The law came along and and, and uh, as man were under the law and tried to live under the law and being justified by the law, man cannot be justified by the law. If it were possible, amen, for you to obtain salvation by fulfilling the law, then it would be a works of, uh, it would be a salvation of works and not a salvation of grace. It is not possible, friend, for a man to be saved other than the grace of God other than by his, by the salvation of the blood of Jesus on the cross of Calvary. But the law came along, in the, and, and no matter how we try to fulfill the law, we never can. Man never can live up to the standard that God requires for us to get to him. But man, this old flesh is weak. This, how many of you have had problems with the old inside man, the old flesh, this week? Raise your hand. Now, if you, if you hadn't had trouble with that, oh, my friends, you're, you're walking way higher than I'll ever be because I'm telling you, this old flesh gives me problems. But amen. When I consider what God's done for me and I consider what's living on the inside of me and I pray every morning before I walk into work, Lord, help me to walk after the Spirit and not after the flesh. 
And if I pray that and God helps me with that, then, friend, my days go a whole lot better because it's easier walking in the Spirit than it is the flesh if you're walking in the Spirit. Now, if you just let yourself go and walk after the flesh, you've got no problem with that because that's what the old flesh wants to do. It wants to do what the world wants to do. It wants to do the sins that the world does. But, friend, walking after the Spirit of God, with the Spirit of God helping you, you'll find your life more meaningful in this life. Now, the law came along, and as we, as, as we can know and see that the, uh, the law, for what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, because of man, the law could not do what needed to be done. God sent His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, not in sinful flesh, but in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. I'm glad, friend, that I'm no longer under law. Amen. I'm glad that I'm under grace. For they, verse 5, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, and to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity uh, against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Friend, if you're not living after the Spirit of God, if you're not living your life walking in the Spirit of God, then you cannot please God. It is impossible. If you go after the things of the world, if you go after the sinful pleasures of this world, and if you, you do that and live your life according to that, even if you're a child of God, friend, you cannot please God walking after the flesh. I sometimes, you know, we know when we're, we know when we're in the flesh because the Spirit of God inside of us reminds us that we're in the flesh. I use anger sometimes as a sign of being in the flesh and not after the Spirit. Christ was the one that was angry and sinned not. When he drove those out of the temple, uh, you know, with the whip, when he drove those out of the temple, he was angry, but he was not in sin. Now, there may have been a few times when I was angry and not in the flesh, but I can't bring him to remembrance right now. Most of the time when I'm mad, I'm just old fleshly mad. Amen? Most of the, now, I'm angry at sin, and when I'm angry at sin and I want to kick sin around, then I'm, then I'm rightfully angry. But when I just get mad at somebody, amen, for cutting me off on the highway, amen, the Spirit of God ain't in that, I'll just tell you, I'm just in the flesh. Amen? Y'all laughing because I know that's what does it to you. I think road rage is one of the Christian's biggest concerns. about being in the flesh. Now, I know there's a lot of other things of the mind that bother you and that trouble you. And I know how the devil infiltrates your mind. And I know how the devil wants to cause you to be in the flesh. But I'm telling you, if you're walking after the Spirit of God, you're a much happier person. If you're walking after the Spirit of God, road rage ain't going to bother you a whole lot. Amen. I've tried to develop this attitude when somebody cuts me off. They're in a bigger hurry than I am. Now, I'm working on it. I'm not there yet, but I'm working on it. Don't shake your head at me, wife. Amen. They're over shaking her head at me. I'm telling you, I'm not there yet, but I'm working on it. I don't like getting in the flesh. You know what it makes me feel like when I get in the old flesh? It makes me feel bad. And what do I have to do? Lord, help me is what I have to do. And I'd be far better off not walking in the flesh and walking in the Spirit of God and proclaiming, amen, and enjoying my walk in the Spirit of God than that misery of walking in the flesh. You may be here this morning, you may be a child of God, and you may be living in the flesh. You may be walking after the things of this world. I'll tell you, you'll get down there and you'll live there for a while, but if you don't get miserable of it after a while, if you don't get sick and tired of living after the flesh after a while, you need to check up because you probably ain't saved to start with. Amen. If you can live down in the hog pen, if you can live down in the pit of this world and not be bothered by the sin of this world, then, friend, chances are real good that you've not been born again and you need to get right with God. Now, I'll tell you something. When I sin, the Holy Spirit of God convicts me of my sin. Now, the best is yet to come in this point right here 
One of these days, I'm not going to have to deal with the flesh any longer. Hallelujah to God. Amen. When the Lord Jesus takes me out of here by the way of the grave or by the way of the rapture, that day comes when I no longer have to be bothered with this old flesh. I no longer have to be bothered with this old sinful nature that's on the inside of me. Some of y'all looking at me like, surely not, preacher. Surely you don't have a problem with the flesh. I'm telling you, preachers ain't exempt from battling the devil and battling the flesh. Amen. We're not so close that we don't have to battle the flesh. I can feed the flesh or I can feed the spirit. If I feed the flesh the things of this world, then I'm, the flesh is going to win. But if I feed the spiritual man on the inside of me with the things of the Word of God and with prayer, then, friend, the spiritual man is going to win. Amen. So are you walking after the flesh or are you walking after the spirit? Are you, are you living a life of joy in the Lord or are you living a life of temporal happiness living in the flesh? Because it won't last long. I promise you it won't last long. That's why I see Christians that get out into sin and they'll wind up doing, well, let's take, let's take, let's take smoking pot for example. You say, surely Christians don't do that. They say they are. But you know what? After a while, that just ain't good enough for them. They have to go on to something else. Maybe they, go, maybe they go on to the sexual sins of this day and try to live. Listen, you'll never be happy if you're a child of God and you're living in sin. You'll never be happy except you get right with God. I'm happy today. Amen. But you know, before I come to preach this morning, I had to ask the Lord to help me. I had to ask the Lord to help me and to rebuke sin in the flesh and to help me that I'd walk after the Spirit and not after the flesh. Why? Because I want to be clean when I'm before God and I want to be clean when I'm walking before you. God, help us to walk after the Spirit and not after the flesh. The best is yet to come when we don't have to deal with this old flesh any longer. Hallelujah. Let me read on before I preach to you on that for a while. <clears throat> Verse number 9, But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you, now if any man not, have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Paul said if you don't have the Spirit of Christ living in you, then you're not, you're not saved, you're none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his Spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. Do you want to be spiritually alive or spiritually dead? If you're a child of God, you're alive. But did you know that your life can be to others, it can be as dead as a doorknob? Because you, friend, because you are not walking after the Spirit of God. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father, the Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Let me ask you something. Do you have the witness of the Spirit on the inside? Do you have the witness of salvation, the Spirit of God, and salvation on the inside of you? Friend, if you don't, there's something missing in your life. It's called salvation. If you can't in the depths of your heart, if you can't ask the Lord, if you can't say, Lord, I know I'm saved, the Holy Spirit of God will say amen to that. The Holy Spirit of God will jump up and down in your soul and say, yes, you are saved. And I'm glad that the Spirit, the Spirit of God, bears witness with my spirit that I'm a child of God. Now, I, I, I ask you right now, in the stillness of this moment, you say to yourself on the inside, I'm saved. Hallelujah to God. And the Holy Spirit of God, if you're truly a child of God, the Holy Spirit of God will say amen to that. He'll assure you that you're a child of God when you say to yourself, I'm saved, and then the Spirit of God, no matter how you feel, no matter what, what shape you're in, if you're saved and a child of God, there'll always be that reminder down in your soul that you are God's child. Why? Because the Spirit of God lives in there. The Spirit of God took His place when you said, Lord, have mercy.
mercy on me, a sinner. The Spirit of God moved in there. And when he moved in there, friend, the devil moved out. Amen. He has no place in there anymore. And no matter how, listen, I got out of God's will. I use this over and over, and I'm sorry if it bothers you. But I got out of the will of God for a while. But deep down in my soul, I knew that everything I was doing was wrong. I knew that every time I missed church, then there was, there was that still small voice inside of me that says, you know where you ought to be right now. You know where you ought to be. And I'd say, yes, Lord, and I'd go do my own thing. Finally, God got me in a place where I couldn't wiggle. God got me in a place where I knew he was talking to me. You know how, you know how sometimes the kids, they used to didn't listen to you. I, got, I guess I'm going to have to use an adult. You don't mind, do you, brother? And they'll be looking this way, and you're trying to talk to them. You grab them and say, listen to me. It'll happen one day. You, but, you know, if it ain't happened, it will. And you finally you get them on the side of your head and you look at them and say, listen to me, I'm talking to you. Well, one day God had to get a hold of me and he got me in his hands and said, listen to me, I'm talking to you. And guess what? I said, yes, Lord, what do you want? Now, I could tell you what, all about it. And most of you, if I told you how that happened, you'd say, well, that's silly preacher. And to most people, it would be. But guess what? God knew how to get a hold of me. And God's had to do that a time or two in my life. But since that time, friend, I've never been out, of, out, in, out in deep sin. I've never been backslid on God to that extent. Now listen, have I been backslid since then? Yeah, I have. Have you been backslid since God helped you? Yeah, you have. Have you been backslid yet last week? Probably. Oh, that hit on a nerve, didn't it? You know what backsliding is? It's when you're not as close to God as you used to be. And you know what it takes to backslide just a little bit? Road rage. <laughs> Amen. A bad thought, a bad attitude. Listen, when you got that, you're not walking in the Spirit of God, so you backslid just a little bit. So don't take it hard and don't take it personally when I tell you that you backslid on God if you're not as close to God as you ever was. God, help me that I'd be close to God. Amen. Let me go on. Verse number 18. For I reckon, Paul says, I reckon. He's a country boy, sure as the world and from the south. Has to be. He says, I reckon. That the sufferings of this, the sufferings of this present time are not worthy. Paul says, what I'm going through right now, the worldly things I'm going through, the fleshly things that I have to battle, the persecution that I'm suffering, he said, I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Hallelujah, the best is yet to come. Now we look on a few things this morning. Paul, I believe, has a comparison here between the present and the future. Paul's view of the present world that he was living in was a world of vanity. Have you ever seen such a, a, a world of, uh, that is vain? Have you ever seen such a world that everybody says, look at me? Everybody wants you to look at them and see how good looking you are. Listen, every one of us is getting old. We're all just a handful of dirt, amen. That's all that we are. And friend, we one day we're going to go back to that dirt. I'm sure there's graves back here that are nothing but dirt. My fear is walking over one of them and falling in. I would have a heart attack. I hope it's where you want the preacher to go when, and be buried because that's where he'll have to be covered up is right there. Can you imagine walking under, over one of those graves? I don't know, Vetus. You may have done it already. I don't know. But walking over one of them, you flip, fall through. I'd have a heart attack and die. Why? Because the body has gone back to dirt and there's, if there was ever a coffin there, it's rotted away and there's nothing in there but a hole. Oh, friend, it bothers me. It bothers me to think that we think we're something more than a handful of dirt because that's all we are. All the time on the television, if you watch it much, you'll see a commercial on how that it makes you younger, how this, that, and the other product makes you younger. Don't matter what you look like, you can have tummy tucks, you can have, you can have liposuction or liposuction, you can have Botox, you can have all the surgery you want done to make you feel better, look better. But you go look at the calendar and you got a day older while you're doing it. Amen. This is a vain world that we live in. Everybody wants to, everybody wants to look better and look nicer. I told someone the other day, I wish I'd have been born with a little more money and not so good looking. Amen. <laughs> That's the same response I got from them too, by the way. 
But we live in a vain world, and, the, and Paul is looking here, and he says this is a world that is full of, va- of vanity. Paul said this present world is a world that's full of bondage. Oh, friend, today, look around you. Look at all the, all the bonds that are being placed upon believers and upon everyday Americans, by the way. We're under bondage. I'm sure that the government, if it had its way, would shut me up today that I not tell you that Jesus loves you. We're living in a society that is, that is no longer a godly society. It is an ungodly mess and an ungodly nation that we live in. I wish that we were one nation under God, but we're one nation under the, under the influence of sin and under the influence of the devil. But guess what? God still knows what's going on in our country as well as he knows what's going on in your life and in mine. And the old friend today, one of these days, God's going to make it all right. But we're living in a world of where we're slowly being bound down. You know the old story of the frog in the boiling water? Now, I've never, well, no, I've never done this. That's what I'm thinking of. I was a boy, I'd done a lot of things. <laughs> I had to make sure I was telling the truth when I said that. But, you know, they tell me that you can put a, 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 a frog in cold water and in a pot and turn the heat up, and he'll die never knowing that he was boiled alive. Well, that's what's kind of happening, what happens in our country today. We're slowly having the clamps, we're slowly being bound down. Our beliefs are slowly being tried to destroy. Every time somebody does something in public to name the name of Christ, there's some atheist group or some freedom from religion group rises up and says they can't do that. Why not? Amen. And they'll get the, they'll get the ruling to their benefit most of the time. I'm telling you, we're being bound down by the things of this world and by the governmental society. And Paul saw that in his day. He said that we're under bondage. We're under bondage. This present world is a world where Paul said himself he was under bondage. Now, Paul got locked up for preaching the gospel. I've never been locked up for preaching the gospel, but, friend, it could come to me that day. God, help me to be like Paul and continue to preach the word of God. Amen. Paul saw this present world as a, as a world of suffering. The Bible tells me that my life is of a few days and full of trouble. My Bible tells me that Christians for the, living for the cause of Christ will suffer persecution in Christ Jesus. My Bible tells me that we'll face perils and we'll face problems but I want to tell you something, that is the world that we live in. And get, listen, I'm telling you to cheer up, it ain't going to get no better. Amen. How can I cheer up for you? I'll tell you. I'll tell you what will help you to live in this present world. I'll tell you what to live, how to live in this vain world. I'll tell you how to live in this world of bondage. Keep your eyes on the Lamb of God. Amen. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Look at him, my friend. Look at him and see what he's done for you. And remember, your life is only a vapor that appears for a little time and then it vanishes away. You've got hope, my friend, if you know the Lord Jesus. You've got a hope that lives in you. You've got a hope, my friend, that the world can't have or the world can't destroy. And they may come to my door tonight, sister, and they may knock on my door and drag me out of the house and say, you recant the name of Jesus or we're going to kill you. By the grace of God, I'm going to die singing amazing grace. How sweet the sound. Amen. How can you do that, preacher, by the help of God and by listening, friend, knowing that this, what's beyond me is better than what I've got. Amen. Now, Paul saw that, and then he's seen of the world to come. I painted a dark picture of the world that we live in. How many of you are depressed because of it? Raise your hand. Well, nobody. Well, I didn't do too good. Yeah, a couple of you depressed because of the way I pray. Well, listen. For you and everybody else that didn't want to raise your hand or that have turned a deaf ear to my preaching this morning and are not wanting to, are not wanting to believe what I've told you, I want to tell you something that will own up to it today. There is a better day of coming. Hallelujah to God. There's a better day of coming for the child of God. Again, this world is not my home. I'm just passing through. I take a breath. Of the world to come, we see, friend, that it's a world of glory. Hallelujah. The best is yet to come. Now, I don't know. You might have got up this morning. Let's, let's take this. You might have got up this morning depressed. I got, sometimes I wake up, I'm just depressed. I'm going to own up to you. I'm mad enough to admit it. 
Sometimes I wake up and say, oh, no. <laughs> Look at some of them. I can't believe you're telling me that, preacher. That's the way I wake up. You ain't supposed to wake up that way, but I do. But it don't take me long after I say, oh, no, to say, oh, yeah. Because I remember, God brings it to my remembrance about the glory, hallelujah, of what's ahead for me. Amen. The glory of what's ahead for me because I believe Jesus. Amen. Because one day I trusted him. Sometimes I have problems at work. I don't ever have problems at home. Amen. My wife's good to me. And I don't have no problems at the house. But sometimes I have problems at work. Sometimes I have problems with other things. And sometimes it just depresses me, and I wake up saying, oh, no. But then the Lord reminds me that this world's not my home. The, wor- the Lord reminds me that one of these days I'm going to be out of all these problems and all these things that go on to depress me and to make me feel, and I'm going to be in glory. Hallelujah. But here in this life, friend, we ought to want to walk in the glory. We, want to walk, we ought to want to walk after the Spirit and not after the flesh so that a dying, lost world can look at us and see at least they're happy. There's a person at work that told me the other day, <laughs> she just, it's, just one, it's just one of these things you'd have to see to believe. But always giving me issues at work, always giving problems at work. And I finally, I said, ain't you got nothing better to do than to do what you're doing? And that person looked at me and said, how can you be how, it must be real happy being you and being as ill as you are all the time. <laughs> you know why she won't mind? Uh oh, I done said it's a woman now. I didn't mean to do that. But they, they won't mind their own business. They always want to come around snooping and sticking their nose in somebody else's business. And I finally just had to, you know, and they, ain't you ill person? No, I'm not ill. I'm one of the happiest people you'll ever meet most of the time, 90%. Amen, I assure now. Don't think about it. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's glory out there for the child of God in this life. Amen. You don't have to be most miserable. Amen. You live in the flesh, you'll be most miserable. But if you walk after the Spirit of God and not after the flesh, friend, there's glory in this life for the child of God. Amen. But the best is yet to come when I leave this present world and get into the glory of God. Amen. Can you imagine... You know, you won't have to sleep, won't need no rest, but it'd be nice to rest when you don't need it, won't it? Once in a while, I like to sit down and do nothing, but then I, then I sit there thinking all the things I need to be doing, and it's not real restful. But listen, one of these days, you're going to think, when you get to glory, you're going to think, I ain't got a thing to do today, praise the Lord. And nothing will ever occur to you that's sin again. Not a thought will ever run through your brain again that is sinful. Nothing will ever run through your mind that will cause you to be in the flesh. Because why? You won't no longer have this old flesh, this old sin nature to deal with. Guess what else you ain't going to have to deal with? You ain't going to have to deal with the devil. I saw one post on Facebook when I was looking... It ought to be like this when you wake up in the morning and the devil says, oh no, he's awake. Amen. But you know what happens most of the time? If we're not careful, we'll wake up and the devil will start on us. And we'll defeat ourselves by not looking to God. But friend, if we'll look to the Lord Jesus Christ, we can live in the glory down here. And living in the glory down here will help us to understand what a blessing it's going to be when we get to heaven and we're walking in the glory of God. Hey, for as long as God lives. Think about that. How long's eternity? As long as God lives. How long's eternity? Friend, you can't imagine how long eternity is. You think as far in the future as you can think, and you ain't even started to start eternity. This example's used sometimes if this old world were a big old granite rock. And once every one million years, a little bird flew by and brushed its wings against that big granite rock ball rock. And it eroded away just a minute little bit every time that little bird brushed that rock every million years. When this world was completely gone, 
Eternity has just gotten started. Amen. That's how long eternity is, friend. And for eternity, you and I will be in the glory of God if we've been saved by the grace of God. The future, my friend, is a future of being in the glory. The best is yet to come. Then we see that the future is being a life of liberty in the Lord Jesus. Amen. Now, if you're here today and you're walking in bondage, you're walking after the flesh, and you're living with a sin load upon you, let me tell you something today. If you've never accepted Christ as your Savior, what you need to do is understand that you are a sinner in need of a Savior. And when you understand that you're lost and undone without God, you're on your way to hell without Him. Listen, all is sin to come short of the glory of God. There's none righteous, no, not one, the Bible tells me. When you realize you're a sinner, if you call on Jesus and say, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. I believe that you died for me on the cross of Calvary. I believe that you arose for me and believe, the Bible says, Romans chapter number 8, verse 13, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. I'm sorry, Romans chapter 10, verse 13. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved then you too, my friend, can experience the liberty that is in Christ Jesus. Now, if you're here today and you're a child of God and you're walking in bondage, you're living with a sin load upon you because of the pressures of this world and because of the sin of this world, let me tell you what to do, my friend. Get before God (coughs) and say, Lord, help me. I don't want to walk after the Spirit, walk after the flesh, but I want to walk after the Spirit and I want to enjoy the liberty of being a child of God. Amen. And then think about it, the best is yet to come when we get to heaven. Hey, there'll be no bondage at all. Nothing, friend. Total liberty we'll live in when we get to heaven. Amen. Then of the world to come, it's going to be a world of pure delight, pure happiness. I see people that have never smiled in their life. They, they can't. I don't think they could smile. I think their face would fall apart if they smiled. Meanest looking people I know, I see them every day or two. There's one person that comes in that I'm afraid of. I'm afraid to say, hey, how are you doing? I'm afraid she'll tell me. Oh, I said she again. I mean, she walks in there looks like this. You know who I'm talking about, glare at you. That's misery. There's no happiness there. There's no joy there. There can't be. If they're already sick, if that's how some people are and they're happy about it, there's something sick about that, amen. Listen, I like to see people with a smile on their face, amen. You can always tell when people have got a load on their shoulders, they'll come in, they look like they've got a load. But there's coming a day, my friend, the best is yet to come, my friend, when one day you and I will experience total happiness through all eternity. I'm not happy all the time. I'm happy this morning, amen. But I'm not happy all the time. Sometimes I'm sad. Sometimes I'm not, I'm not, I'm not in a real good mood. But one of these days, all oh, that's going to be gone. And you'll never see another day of sorrow. You'll never see another day of sadness. You'll never see, hallelujah, another day of depression. But all will be joy. All will be gladness. All will be happiness. Amen. One day when Jesus comes back. Hallelujah. Now my question, I'm, just, I'm, I'm not through, but I'm quitting. My question to you today is this. How are you going to spend the rest of your days here? On this earth. You got a choice to make this morning. You can you can make the choice. I'm going to go on just like I'm living. I'm going to go on battling the flesh. I'm going to go on trying to serve the Lord. And I'm going to go on asking God for his help. And asking God for his direction. And asking God to give me joy in my soul. And asking God to help me to walk after the spirit of God. And I'm going to do my best. Amen. To serve the Lord till Jesus comes. And live in the glory while here on this earth. You can say that, and I hope you do. Or you may be here today and say, Preacher, I know nothing about what you're talking about. I've never been saved by the grace of God. Let me tell you your option this morning. You have one option, and and that is if, 
If you get saved by the grace of God, you can go to heaven. But the only other option you've got is to die lost in your sin and to plunge into hell, amen, and spend eternity where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. Now, where will you spend eternity? That's a big question that you need to ask yourself this morning, and you need to say, am I going to heaven when I die? And if you're not, you better get right with God because Jesus is coming soon and we don't have much time to tell you about it. You better get saved before it's eternally too late. Amen. Now, you may be a child of God and you're struggling and you're wanting to live one foot in the world and one foot in church. You can't do it. You can't do it. You've got to be for God, amen, or you've got to be in the world. You, that's miserable. That straddling the fence is miserable business, my friend. And what you need to do to get to make things right with the Lord. Say, Lord, I want to serve you. Say, preacher, I'm in such a mess. I don't know how I'm ever going to get out of this. I'm going to tell you how you're going to get out of it. If you want to get out of it, all you have to do is get on your face before a thrice holy God and you cry out what the psalmist David cried. Help, Lord, help, Lord. And guess what? Help is on the way. Amen. But preacher, I, I, can't, I don't know how to undo all I've done. Don't worry about it. You get right with God and give your heart to the Lord and God will help you with the rest of it. Amen. You can go on being miserable, living a, a, a life of the, in the flesh and trying to be a Christian, or you can get right with God and say, Lord, I'm going to serve you the rest of the days of my life and live in joy and live in happiness. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the Word of God this morning. Blessed I pray, blessing the invitation. God, I pray right now if there's someone here that don't know you, God, if they'll just admit it, God, then there's a chance that they'll be saved. And I pray, God, you'd help right now for the backslidden today. Bring them closer to you in Jesus' name. Amen. I